you real quick. Huh? 310. You got 30 310 minutes. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Well, 310 is what I did. I was on an open tractor and I was watching it very close. This was from the commie boards that I had told you guys about a couple of weeks ago. Um, just got the quote back from the southeastern. Gavin actually did a lot of the footboards dealing with the southeastern. Uh, he said that the original quote was what? 727. And um, he negotiated with him and got it to what? For eight, eight of the boards, we'd like to, like I said, get two boards for each unit. Um, so we'll have eight boards and the amount of the 5680, and that includes shipping and handling, about free shipping, and also uh, $12 off of each board. Or Six, huh? 16 or something. Okay, off of each board. So we haven't did wonders for us on the board. And it looks like Southeastern wants our business. Yeah. <laughs> he actually, because I was going to present this last week, and I, of course, waited until the last minute, called to get in, couldn't get in. So, um, and then they said that, um, so we had this since last week, and he called me that next day. Have you heard? <laughs> I didn't get to go to the meeting. Have you heard? He called me the next day. I think it's two weeks now he's called me in a row, and I'm going, oh, we're going to go, and I will call you as soon as I know. <laughs> Southeastern's actually a newer company, and when we moved everything to them, we used to go through EMP for a lot of our stuff, and we were paying close to $150 for a box of 50 ID casters. Uh, when we transferred over to Southeastern, we're paying $8 a box for 50 ID casters. And these are the current vendors we typically use, the EMP and Boundary, so we're, we're using quite a bit, and then Southeastern has got us a lot of savings. Where did you say that money was coming from? What was that coming out of the Medical equipment? Here. Sure. Yeah, they've got 13000 uh, in there. Out of your regular budget? Yes. Okay. We had 16 and then we used to quite three. So that's who you want to go with, the Southeastern? Yes. One our business and are giving us the best deal, so your guys is blessing. I'll make the motion we accept the bid from Southeastern for the backboards uh, for $5,680 tax, freight, and everything included. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion on the second to buy eight backboards from Southeastern for $5,680. All in favor say aye. 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 Now you can call him. <laughs> yeah, he will probably be calling me at 9 o'clock. Have you heard yet? And I'm like, <laughs> not yet. That's all we have for you guys. I'll be back next week. Let me know about the months, what we brought in, and what we built up. Okay, good. Okay. Thanks. Do you have your phone, Misty? Huh? Do you have your phone? I do. I have both. Okay. And I have a radio. And have a glasses. <laughs> Thank you, motion away for 11 minutes from 218. Second. Okay, we have a motion second to approve the minutes from the June 18th meeting. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Oh, I got another one for the canvas. Set the minutes of June 23rd for canvassing the ballots. Let's look at that. that <laughs> well, kind of funny, 8 I'm 30 and then. Trying to keep you out of trouble. <laughs> right. Trying to keep you out of trouble. Very good. Are you saying? Yeah, I'm saying that. June 23rd. We have a motion and a second to approve the ballot canvassing meeting. June 23rd, all in favor say aye. 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 Tomorrow is a meeting at 3 at Hudson, mm -hmm. and 2 to 4 is Elaine's 
Yes. We like the reception. Higher on the reception. And where is that going to be? Third point. Okay. Well, it's still wet. <laughs> but it's said it might be the very same thing today. Yeah. Did yeah. Yeah. Did you work outside yesterday? It was just lucky, terrible, and I terrible to eat yesterday morning about 10 o'clock. I blew it away, but it's only 100% in the middle of the This is a contract Jeff brought in that is for seasonal detention services. This is called that Robert something right there, detention center. Yeah. But doesn't it, don't they have a name? Bob Johnson Youth Shelter. Yeah. Is that, is that the same thing? I, I honestly don't know anything about it. I don't know anything about it. This letter was sent to Jeff. Joe said a couple of weeks ago, <clears throat> we haven't sent anyone, anyone, anyone over there until this year.
16th. It's good. I was just curious about it. Have you ever heard any more about that green facility up at Canton? Not that I've, I mean, heard anything more about it. I mean, I know that they're just continuing to... to I know, it, well, the silos are up and all of that. And, and there is a railroad spur. I mean, there is a railroad mm -hmm. about a mile away from there, so it looks like. And they built this huge overpass to handle the trucks mm -hmm. for the rail. and. Uh, I was just curious because it was Mid Kansas Co op and someone else. It was, it's a huge facility. It's totally green. I think it's far enough away from here that we wouldn't draw mm -hmm. um, rain from the same right. locations. The one that I've heard a little bit about that, I'm not sure how it would affect Stafford County, is um, you know, it's, uh, one that's proposed near Hollywood. Um, by Bartlett Green on the, the you know, I, you just kind of, it's in the rumor stage, you know, because, <laughs> you know, talking with the folks at Watco, they really didn't even know a whole lot about exactly how they were going to serve it, and hello, <laughs> they're the railroads. So, you know, I mean, short-line railroads are more set up to do more frequent in, in smaller trains, not one train of 100 cars all at once. That take a lot, large part of their equipment fleet mm -hmm. at one time. So, um, you know, it's, I think, still a preliminary project that so far Bartlett Green has, has I guess, said that they're, they're planning to build something on their by home. But that, that would kind of draw into separate you know, territory.
No. No. We'll adjourn. process, but I think it's kind of a never-ending at this point. <laughs> yeah. Got that. Yeah, okay. And that includes whatever the state might or might not have done to help you with that process. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm uh, representing the uh, our early education program at Sunfire. We also provide adult services, but uh, SDSI approaches you for budget purposes as far as those programs are concerned. <clears throat> so just want to give you a little bit of information about the program and then look at budget figures and such. But we're in our 48th year of providing services. And Sunflower actually began as a children's program and then expanded to provide services to adults uh, a couple of years after that. So this has always been a priority for our organization and our board of directors is intent on making sure it continues to be that. On the first page is just a listing of all of the services that we provide as a as a provider of services under the uh, federal Part C grant that uh, is administered through Health and Environment. We are required to provide every service that any child needs and we're not allowed to have any kind of waiting list. So every child who's identified with a need needs to be served and whatever those services, whatever services are required, we have to figure out how we're going to do that. Um, uh, not too surprisingly, the state and the federal government doesn't provide additional funds when we have additional services to provide, but that just kind of goes with, with the territory. Um, last year, we served a total of 242 children in our infant and toddler program, which is birth to three. Uh, of that, 25 of those children were uh, Stafford County residents. We had a, a total of 185 referrals last year, which is up from the previous year. Um, I, think, I think the year before that it was maybe about 175 or something. So we continually, uh, we continue to receive uh, constant referrals from, the, that could be doctors, uh, public health offices, families, friends, whoever it happens to be. And we think that, quite honestly, a lot of the, of the additional referrals is maybe due in part at least to the, the advertising that's associated with the autism spectrum. A lot more families, because of, of that information that they're receiving, and kind of uh, just, uh, it's certainly not a scare tactic, but it's a caution at least. The number of children that are that are being identified now has risen from to one in 68 that are somewhere on that autism spectrum, and so I think families are taking advantage of assessment and screening opportunities just to make sure their child is is developing at at, uh, at a normal pace. And we have a number of families that uh, have had their child screened several different times, just to not because they necessarily see, see a problem, they just want to make sure that they're not missing something. So that's a good thing. We are still meeting and, and staying right around one in every four children that we serve who uh, reach their developmental age and then don't, are not going to need special ed services in the future. So state and national averages are around one in five. So we're, we're uh, well within that range. It, it will vary from year to year. We've seen actually in the last, probably in the last six months, uh, an increase in the number of children who have more severe, uh, severe disabilities such as cleft palate, uh, swallowing issues and things like that. And we had not experienced that to this extent in, in a while. So we have, because of that, we had to add a, uh, an additional part-time speech therapist on staff to work with those. We have a full-time person, but we've added a, another person, uh, the equivalent of about eight hours a week, just to help with that increase in the number of referrals. Um, another service that probably seems a little out of place, but is mentioned here also, and that's infant mental health services. And, and 
again, I think some of it is just the culture that we find ourselves in. Part of it is environmental. Some of it is probably the result of um, drug addictions, fetal alcohol syndrome, and things like that. But we're seeing um, something of an increase, at least, in the number of children who have that are behavioral issues that are um, just um, socially not developing at the rate that they need to. And in a lot of cases, what we're seeing as potential issues when we screen are things that families might not necessarily catch. Uh, you know, like a parent will say, well, uh, my, my child is really quiet, or they, they hardly ever cry. And in some cases, that's not a good thing, because that's, that's a communication tool, or the child doesn't make eye contact, or just doesn't, doesn't relate even to, um, even to parents or to family. That, you know, you try to play peekaboo games and they don't play. Those are those are just social issues that that need to be addressed as well. In our and we're seeing probably we're dealing with that more in in our preschool program. And that program's not part of the that's not funded by county. That's strictly private fees and some state dollars. But we established a program for children two and a half to five. Um, regardless of whether they have a disability or not. It's just a good quality preschool program. But uh, last year, I think 15, if I remember right, 15 out of the 69 children that we served in that program were um, identified, diagnosed with a developmental delay, which means that uh, either parents didn't recognize that delay at, the, at an earlier age, or they thought that they would grow out of it, just for whatever reason. And then as the child started to get a little bit older, got to be three, maybe four years old, and started to get closer to school, then they started to recognize that the, the, the child's not at the same level that some of their friends are. So a lot of, the, a lot of children that, unfortunately, we, we missed in the first couple, three years, we're picking up now at that, at that later age. Uh, as I said, we are, I think there's always a question uh, as to what the county's actual responsibility is for providing these kinds of services. You, the counties don't have a mandate of any sort to provide services for uh, children with disabilities. But Sunflower, because we accept federal funds, we do have that mandate. Um, we have to provide a free and appropriate education just as the schools do because we made that commitment to do that. And our, our organization has made the commitment so um, the county doesn't have a requirement to provide services or to provide financial assistance, but in, in the situations that we're in right now, it's a combination of federal, state, and local dollars and what we can raise in the way of donations and other, um, other campaigns that are necessary to try to meet all of those financial requirements, such as having to hire an extra speech therapist. Um, Last year we had to hire, uh, we have a, a part-time, half-time physical therapist on staff, but we had to hire a second half-time physical therapist, again, because of the increasing needs. Statewide, uh, last year the state reported about a 17% increase in the number of children that were identified and who are receiving services. So. I don't know if that necessarily means the need is getting greater or whether uh, families are just recognizing uh, doing a better job uh, of catching what, what those issues are and, and uh, requesting services to, to meet that need. Uh, our request from Stafford County this year is just to stay at the same level that we've been for a number of years, so it's uh, 32684. We, uh, We've seen a reduction, not too surprisingly, in federal funds over about the last five years. We were as high as about 152,000. This year we're at 136,000, and next year we'll jump up about 2,000 more because the state put a little bit more money into the program. Um, at the end of the legislative session last year, when the legislature was making decisions about school funding, they uh, it was it was a it was a strange ending to say the least, and, and I have to say I'm not real sure exactly how that's going to how that's going to play out in the long term. But 
we contract, have we have an interagency agreement with uh, USD 428 and Martin County Special Services, and, and what actually what they do is they count our teachers in their teacher count. So they receive per teacher reimbursement through categorical aid, and then they pass that through to us. It's kind of, it's pretty standard statewide as to how um, infant toddler programs can access state dollars because we have no access to it directly. We have to work through the schools. So, but that's on a per teacher reimbursement, and that's been declining a little bit in recent years too. So, um, not sure exactly what's going to happen with that either. So. What we did a few years ago was to establish our Invest in Kids uh, Club. And this year, for 2015, we raised our goal from 50000 to 60000 We've We've hit that each of the first three years that we did it. And we're, we're kind of off to a slow start this year, but we're still confident we're going to hit that. And it's just basically to try to make up for losses and other funds. Our adult programs, we've already seen them. Reduction. Last year, we we lost. Well, we got cut about uh, about one hundred and fifty thousand dollars in Medicaid funds for adult programs, and that's all kind of the result of the state's Can Care program. And the, the uncertainties that go with that are probably similar to the uncertainties that you're looking at mm -hmm. when they start talking about mortgage fee cuts and reductions and things like that. So we're just trying to anticipate. Uh, trying to be cautiously optimistic, but yet at the same time realistic about what might happen with those funds. The, uh, the governor's plan said that they would not cut, they would not cut rates, and they would not reduce services, but they would still save over $100 million in Medicaid funds over multiple years. And logic says that doesn't make much sense. So we're anticipating there will probably be some reductions in, in how those Medicaid programs are funded in the coming years. So um, we cut about a hundred and about a hundred and thirty, hundred twenty or hundred thirty thousand dollars out of our out of our budget between last year and this year, almost exclusively in wages. But in children's services, because we're required to maintain every service, there's just not much we can you can reduce there. So. Overall, our, uh, again, our budget for next year, we actually are anticipating about, about a $20,000 increase over last year, and that's almost exclusively in uh, wages because we've, we've been pretty much, uh, we've been almost required, quite honestly, to hire more certified professionals as opposed to paraprofessionals. Because that's what uh, that's how the state that's where the bulk of the, the funding will come from. But we're also anticipating about about a twenty to twenty five thousand dollar increase in uh, in that in the state categorical aid re reimbursement because they reimburse teachers at a much higher level than parents. But we've uh, we've tried to trim about every way we can and to try to hold our budget about as steady as we can possibly hold it. So. That's, that's kind of what we're, we're projecting for next year. Is there any way that what you do with Great Bend you could do with other counties to get a reimbursed for a teacher like in early childhood um, preschool? Or? What, what we did we, before, that's what we did. We were we contracted with every uh, special ed co-op in each of the five counties, and but it was on a per student basis rather than a teacher basis. And it was it was complicated for the school districts, and the state didn't particularly like it either. So what USD 428 has done is just basically combined it all together, and they identify all the teachers, and then and then we get reimbursed on a I don't know what they amount twenty five twenty six thousand dollars per teacher, regardless. Why couldn't you do that with other counties? Well, you can only do it once. So if they're counting the teacher. Uh, they turn that into the state, and the state then does, takes that count. So we're showing, if we have three certified teachers, and, and, and USD 428 counts those three teachers, then they're going to get that reimbursement, and then they pass it back to us. But there isn't any way to count it a second time. You can't count everybody within the five county. 
region together? Uh, no, because we're counting staff rather than kids. The, uh, as, is, as is standard, the state has figured out about as complicated a way to reimburse uh, the education system as they can. But, um, honestly, this works out financially, this works out the best of, of, of all possible worlds. Because with kids before, you had to count the number of days that they were actually in service and uh, keep a lot of attendance records. And, and so the, the reimbursement was actually less by doing that than it is by doing this. And probably Barton has the most percentage-wise clients. They have about, of, of all of the, of the children that we served last year, theirs was about 60%. So Rice and... Stafford, Pawnee, and Rush, about 10% each? Uh, actually, it's about, well, I didn't write that down. Rush County, obviously, is pretty low. Um, Stafford, Rice, and, and Pawnee County, about, you know, kind of about the same amounts. Yeah, about 15 to 20%. How did you come up with, how did you originate this 32,684? Is that? It's, it's more historical than anything else. So all the other counties have been staying or funding the same as well? With the exception of Barton County. And I, I won't lie to you, Barton County has not. They've, they've, taken a, they've taken the low road the last several years. And we just I just met with them yesterday and did our budget proposal with them and asked them once again to, to consider the services that they're getting. And quite frankly, they, they get the bulk of the economic development as well because most of the staff live in Barton County, or at least close to where that's their, that's their shopping area. Barton County uh, this year, I think, is at 20,000. So they're certainly not carrying their share. And uh, if it's, it wouldn't be unreasonable for, for other counties to say, well, if Barton County is not going to do their share, then why what should we carry it? What are the other counties? Uh, Pawnee County is at 20,000. Uh, Rice County is at 30. And Rush County is just a little over 5,000. But they only serve, on average, about probably just one or two children from that area. Uh, Rush County's kind of split from, uh, from, from about 183 west, they go to Hayes. And they're part of that school, oh, that, that special ed cooperative. So uh, Otis Bison is in the Barton County Cooperative. And so the county is is split and, and so consequently the number of children that are served are we don't see necessarily all of them that are there. But do you think it, it it would is there anything that could entice Spartan County to do a, a, their percentage? If the rest of the counties drop theirs, would that in, encourage them to do any more? I, I'm, I'm trying to think of a diplomatic way to answer that. But no, I, I really don't, think, don't so. think so. I they you didn't get a uh, response yesterday then either. Well, no, because they're you know they they didn't say they didn't say no, but they just they they for some reason the last couple of years in particular they they've kind of taken the position that they're not sure how early education programs fall into the priority county services. And we're going to continue to try to convince them that obviously that you know, when you're serving that many children, that many families, that's a that's that's a pretty fair commitment to an awful lot of, of Park County residents. What, what benefit there is to economically would go to them. I mean, yeah, yeah. And I, I try not to spend too much time on the economic development because I, I, I really want I uh, really want the counties to understand what a valuable service this is and what it, what kind of a difference it makes. Uh, you know, I, I don't have a child with a disability, so I really can't imagine what, what families are dealing with. I can say that I do, but I don't. So, but I know that especially when uh, you know, parents all of a sudden have a, have a child that they've been waiting on for nine months and then find out that they have some kind of a delay or maybe a serious disability, um, they need somebody to just be there for them, even more so for the family necessarily than for the child initially. So it's it's a critical service, and I'm 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 not going to say I'm confident, but I'm hopeful that Barton County will, will kind of turn things around and, and decide to 
add that back into their priority list. But in the meantime, I'm just hoping that asking that the other counties continue to see it as a priority, even if Horton County maybe doesn't. But on the other, <coughs> excuse me, on the other side, on the adult services, mm -hmm. are they more expensive per client than, say, childhood? Yeah, probably. Yeah, and and that's you know if you're looking long range and you're saying well it makes more sense to invest at the at an earlier age and and eliminate the number of children who might need services as either special ed or adult services. It's from, a, from an economic investment standpoint, it just makes good sense. But quite frankly, the states, they say that it's an important service, but they've never really stepped up either. Um, the federal government is only going to allow, they're only going to provide so many dollars based on what the state will put up for match. And so the federal dollars for our programs have stayed pretty constant over the last, really the last 10 years. And so each year, the allocation of those funds is based on the number of children that are being served in any particular population area, the number of births in any area. So you start looking at the number of children being served in Johnson County versus the number of children being served in rural Kansas, and we're not going to fare very well. The state put in about a hundred thousand new dollars this year to match down federal dollars, and and our piece of that was not quite two thousand dollars. So. Uh, so obviously the dollars are always going to go to the more urban areas because then there's more, more people, and that makes that's, it puts, puts additional burden once again on the counties and on and on our ability to raise local funds. And quite frankly, because Barton County hasn't really done what we would would hope that they would do in the way of funding, we've concentrated virtually all of our efforts on local fundraising for the invested kids to Barton County. We, uh, you know, we have our annual gala, and we use that as, as a kickoff for that campaign. But all of our all of our efforts for trying to raise those dollars, we're not going out into the other counties and asking for donations. We're, we're, uh, we're doing face-to-face -face solicitation of Barton County residents. And so to some extent, maybe I'm hoping that those folks will ask, well, why, why am I paying my taxes if I'm having to, to donate again? But in the meantime, uh, basically, the local donors are making up the difference. If that, you know, if that helps you feel any better, why? But this is my two cents. So I would think, with the other counties, I, I would see why you wouldn't need to talk about economic development. But with Barton County, mm -hmm. I would think that would make sense to me as So um, it's the same the only service they cut, though, either. No, no, it's not. It, you know, they, oh, I know. They, 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 Several they don't set, they don't the, the last the last couple of years, and, and I'm certainly not here to to, to rag on on the county, but they've they've taken a, a pretty hard stand on a lot of other types of services from everywhere from our program to humane society to whatever else in the way. And their their intention has been to focus more on county operations and not so much on some of the support kinds of services that help make a county what it is. So, um, and that, you know, maybe that will change. Yeah. I don't know. I can only hope. This is what I've been doing. For, <laughs> I've been doing this for 40 years, so I, I believe it. I just can't imagine why everybody else wouldn't believe right. it the same way. So, yeah. We do appreciate the, the support that this county has given us over the years. And, the only other thing we need is a board member. Oh, so, yeah. but you don't have to appoint anybody, so you can go. Whew. But we we really could we really would like to have <coughs> if you if you know of someone that you think would be good in in uh, serving on the board of directors for the services that we provide. We we don't have anyone from Stafford County right now. So, and you want a minority would be better. Mm -hmm. Would a minority person be better, better or not? Doesn't make any, any difference. Any Doesn't difference. make any okay. difference. Just need somebody who can can lend either a, a business perspective to the to the board or an uh, educational perspective. It doesn't really doesn't make any difference. Uh, you just you just need to be represented, and uh, we just we just haven't had much luck twisting arms. So. You guys are in a power position. You can yeah. ask <laughs> you, you meet monthly? Uh, every other month. 
area of the month. Yeah. And we we meet. Uh, it's it's the third Tuesday of the month. We start at six thirty. Uh, the meetings sometimes go as late as nine. But the board decided that they would rather meet a little bit longer and then meet less often. Then we have an executive board that can address the issues in between if it becomes necessary. We also do some work by just by email if there's something critical that's going on. So we take advantage of that as well. But again, if you let somebody said there's nothing to do. The, the people that are good on boards generally have plenty of other boards that they're serving on. That's just kind of the kind of the reality of things. So, but again, we appreciate your, your support and you know you'll do what you what you can do for us. So. Thank you. Um, if you anytime you want to tour programs, give me a call. Um, we'd be more than happy to walk you through the things that we're doing and give you a better understanding of where your dollars are going. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. everything. picture black and white at night or color or depending on at, the light. At night they're usually black and white. Yes. Color. Yes. 
yeah, as the infrared kicks in. It's total darkness, the infrared will kick on. And on those, it shows how many feet of infrared uh, viewing you have in total darkness. Uh, if there is sunlight at each one of those locations at night, it will be better. But that's in total darkness, that's really the cameras that We put those in a lot of different places. They're nice bully cameras. They're actually about that big around. They, they, they look nice and they have their 700 line resolution. That's what the, the 700 on the TV. So it's 700 line resolution. They're, they're as good as you can get without hopping up to a IP camera, which is 3 to 5 megapixels. So, uh, but the problem with uh, IP cameras is you don't have nearly the distance in the infrared at night. Uh, the, the picture quality during the day is much better, but at night when you have most of your events happening, uh, the, the infrared is only a maximum of 85 feet. So, that's down to what you can see. Especially since a lot of your places are you know, viewing outdoor distances. That's why I kind of recommend going with this style. It's powered off of that, and they're all fused. 
because each individual camera is fused. So since we started and put those in uh, on pretty much every system, it saves on
hard issues. Right. You just don't too, really. Not like the township. Oh. After they talked for three or four minutes, I said, I'm not on the township board anymore. I'm sorry. Yeah, he, 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 because he called me too, and I, yeah. I, I was busy. And <laughs> I, went, I went over and fixed it for him. There's two. There's two. It wasn't <laughs> really very. It did tie and go out with the with these ones. I mean, you're tying, you're making new and old, trying to fit together. And something. We use that in the metal deck. It just looked like the end of that. I mean, my wife noticed it. She said it felt like a Sponge. diving board when she walked out mm -hmm. to get the man. <laughs> I thought driving a truck over that would be yeah. really cool. I, I dropped through that bridge one time. You remember that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't think you dropped through there. The stringers are pretty close together. They are, so. but I don't. I told her you wouldn't fall through through it. Yeah. Okay. Somebody asked me if we had any new bridges on this new bridge project. I said no, we didn't have anything else. Any small structure we are in good shape. So that's something we're coming this fall. We'll have two bridge inspections again. Every two years. I wonder if they don't have a fresh critical. Right.
home with inspection. Yeah, we've been, I mean, we've been on to your inspection. So. I don't know. It's, I think that's where all this stuff finds in. Well, that goes to the lowest there. Take two of the original action people to get on it. That's usually your local consultant. Because most of these guys don't know what I'm saying. No, I'm saying that the interstate up there in, in, in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. contract that the commissioners actually, I didn't do it, the commissioners did back then, it's an agreement that they will hold bids for us, that they can't refuse us, is basically what it is, otherwise we'd have to go to Joaquin. So. Well, it said that him a contract since 2002. Yeah. Okay, well, but they've done long. this before, I mean, okay. we've changed it. Uh, right. Something about, because of the changes, that's why they're, this is, these are the changes, yeah. Did they say what they're raising it to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's all it's listed out. All. all those bullets are changes. All right, we got it. <laughs> Just don't turn around. I'm not going. Can I take so, a picture? Yeah, because sure. it, it used to be 140 <laughs> a, a day, and the, they raised it 150. But I didn't recall. Well, it's 150, though. That's I what it is. more than that. Yeah. But then they're raising it to the water bed or whatever. Yeah. yeah. To well, and I can, before you guys do anything, I can check with Joaquin, but you know, that's two hundred right. Uh, one more. That's not good. And we've gone for several years not using them until this year. Correct. And are they still over there? Yeah, we've got one still there. Just took one last week. It looks like that contract was really with the Reno County, re the county, right. the commissioners. That's the well, right. Right. They own the, yeah, they own Bob Johnson's, used to be Bob Johnson's. Is that west of, that's their, yeah. Just across the road. Okay. And it's just, it's a hundred bucks more a day as opposed to an adult. And it's because of the... Right. You either go there, Joaquin, or Topeka. Not for years we have, but it's been a long time. Probably a little bit cost effective. Yeah. And hopefully the judge will not send any more over there. <laughs> well, the problem is the judge, the judge is not the one that sends it to begin with. Now, usually, once they come to court, they don't go back depending on what the crime was. But what happens when you arrest a juvenile, you have to call juvenile intake. That's a whole separate deal. They're the ones that decide whether they're going to go to a facility or to someone's home. So that's who decides that. And that's 14 years younger? 16. 16. Well, 15 and younger. Well, actually, you can't, I mean, it depends on the crime again. 18 right, right. Uh, is the, uh, goes to an adult facility, but if the judge orders 17 or 16 year old, then they can be done. 
Yeah, I mean, Greensburg at one time was going to put one in, but they didn't. And I still haven't got to talk to the person that actually knows on the Purple Wave deal in Reno County, but I've called some other sheriffs, and they've looked into it. I, I think part of the problem is if the county wanted to sell the county vehicle, that's one thing. But when you're selling an abandoned vehicle, that's a whole separate deal. You have, there's certain paperwork you have to fill out. You've got to advertise in the paper, and then you've got to sell it. And I'm not sure you couldn't do that on Purple Way once all that's done. And that's what I'm trying to find out. Because, it, I mean, it, that'd be nice, because the seal bid deal, you don't get to right. Right. And, and, I mean, we could even have auction them. I mean, instead of they auction them, but again, if I'm the auctioneer, you're not going to get much. <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to get auctioneer. No, I've heard you before. Yeah. <laughs> so you have to hire an auctioneer. But yeah. I'll do some more checking on it. Because it well, I know Sedgwick County, you see them on that purple wave. Those are banned vehicles on purple wave. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll see if I can find out how they do it. Well, and then the fire department has a couple items they want to get. Right. Right. But those that we own. Right. So yeah. thank you we for watching. Because right. right. yeah. see, we've got to get, you got to apply for a title and everything to do. The right, cool. And then the security people. Didn't we have four? Did you contact four? Right. I did. Yeah. yeah. And we've got two. Yeah. Uh, you've got Next Tech, which is Gold Bell. Bell. Okay. So PNS hasn't responded. And the yeah. state never. PNS that they look around here. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they probably looked around the most. They want to look around the building. Yeah. You want me to give them a call and find out what the look is? Wouldn't hurt. Yeah. They may not. Okay. Yeah. Because we've got two and we're ready to do so. Do so. Okay. I'll give them a call. Thank you. Thank you. Glasses. Yeah, thanks. Did you get a picture? <laughs> no, I didn't. I did not. That's nice. Thanks. <laughs> Anything else? I don't know. Just remember the golfers and football players. Okay. We'll adjourn.